Hey, I'm Mr. James at Charm City Karate. My question for you this week, are you learning how to fight or are you learning self-defense? The difference is this. Most people, when they're training in a martial arts studio, are really just learning how to fight. They're not learning self-defense. If you're learning self-defense, you're learning how to fight, but you're also learning a whole bunch of other skills too. You're learning things like awareness, you're learning things like verbal boundary setting, you're learning a lot of other skills besides just how to punch and kick and block. If all you're learning is how to fight, you know, karate skills, kung fu skills, jiu-jitsu skills, you're not really learning self-defense. I know, you think you are, but that's not self-defense. Learning what most people think of as self-defense, don't try to blame this on your karate school or your jiu-jitsu school. Learning what most people think of as self-defense would be kind of like going to a driving school where all they taught you was to ram stuff to stop the car and rely on the airbags or the seat belts. It's not very good, but it's kind of like how they think. You know, you got this great safety system, airbag to keep you from hitting anything and getting hurt, seat belt keeps you right in the seat, so you don't need the brakes. You don't really need to look around either. You just point the car, and you hit the gas, you wait until, pff, hey, that worked. Car stopped, everything's cool. It's not really cool, though. You know, and self-defense is like that. You know, in your car, you got these cool windshields so you can look around, see what's going on around you. You got the steering wheel so you can steer the car, you can go around corners, you can go around obstacles. You got turn signals so you can let other people know what's going on so they don't just ram into you. You got a brake so you can stop or adjust your speed. You got a gas pedal so you can go faster. Maybe you need to, oh, go a little quicker to get past somebody so they don't ram into you. The seat belt and the airbag are last resort stuff. That's like what happens if everything goes wrong. Fighting is the same thing as far as self-defense goes. Physical, combative parts of martial arts are what you do when everything else goes wrong in your self-defense skills. It's the stuff you don't want to use. You never want to see an airbag pop up in your face when you're driving. That's a bad thing. Something went wrong. Okay. In your self-defense arsenal are all these other tools. Awareness of what's going on around you. You got your eyes so you can see bad people coming or a bad situation. You got your ears so you can hear somebody sneaking up behind you or hear an argument, two guys getting really loud in a bar, calling each other bad names. You got your brain to process this information and go, oh, those guys are about to throw. It's time to leave the bar. You can process the fact that those four guys that were walking down the street talking to each other suddenly started acting like they didn't know each other and broke up into a couple of separate people and now they're spreading out. They're going to entrap you. That's going to be a bad thing. It's time to be on guard. Okay? You have your internal awareness so that you realize what's going on in your own head and you realize this guy that's walking towards you a little bit too fast is something you need to pay attention to and you need to put away the mental grocery list or stop thinking about all that stuff your boss said to you earlier that's got you so hyped up inside and you need to deal with this current situation. You, you've got your verbal boundary setting skills so that when this guy's in your face and 
He's yelling and screaming at you about taking his parking spot. And you don't even know what's, what he's talking about. You can calm him down. You can resolve this issue without it having to get violent. Rather than just kicking him and punching him and fighting him off. You know, so that when you're at a party and some dude says, hey, let's go back to my house, and you say, I don't want to, and he keeps saying, yes, let's go back to my house, baby, come on, you're really pretty in that dress, and you're like, no, I don't want to, you can let him or make him understand that you're not going back to his house because that's not what you want to do, and you can avoid that whole bad scene rather than having to fight this guy in the parking lot or get dragged somewhere you don't want to go. Fighting is the last resort. The problem is, fighting is the sexy thing to practice, all right? Practicing your awareness skills isn't that much fun. Practicing your verbal boundary setting isn't that much fun, okay? When we teach those classes, teaching verbal boundary setting is very stressful having to role play those those verbal attackers role play those scenarios it's awful you, you gotta put yourself mentally as the as the bad guy in a really dark place and there's no really happy solution for you as the bad guy as the student it's a scary, stressful place for you because you react to it just like it's a real life scenario. And a success for you, a win for you, is that nothing happens. You walk away. So that's pretty hard to take too. What all that means is nobody wants to practice it. It's not fun. Practicing karate Practicing jujitsu, it's more competitive, you know? It's back and forth. It's, let me see how good I am. It's fun to do. You get a sweat on. You get to work out. You feel good when you're done because you got those endorphins running through your body. And you get to make steady progress. You get to see how good you're getting. It's fun. Practicing your awareness skills you don't really get to see that steady progress. You don't, you don't get to compete with somebody in the same kind of way. It's not sexy. Practicing your boundary setting skills, it's not sexy. So nobody wants to really do it. If you come to my class and you watch and we run a martial arts type drill, we're gonna hit pads tonight, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna do jab cross, dip the shoulder, step off, roundhouse kick. Ooh, everybody's excited. Pop, 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 pop. They're having a great time. They love doing that. Cool. You guys did a great job. Yay, everybody's happy. All right. Next night they come in, say, okay, tonight we're going to do verbal boundary setting drill. Huh? Here's what you're going to do. One of you is going to come up. You're going to say, you took my parking spot. You got to get your hands up, back the guy off. Uh, nobody wants to do that. It sucks. Oh, uh, that's no fun. Everybody's kind of, uh, it's not sexy. They don't want to do it. Teach them an awareness drill, make them do it back and forth. They do it like three times. They're like, Mr. James, are we done? It's not cool. All right, but here's the thing. You got to do it. It's important. Awareness will save you from ever having to do boundary setting. Boundary setting will ha save you from ever having to do combat or fighting and that's the whole goal okay because if you have to fight somebody you don't know if you're gonna win okay when two tigers fight one dies the other one gets hurt you don't know which one's gonna be you man so really what you want to do is you want to cut things off as early as you can okay the path of the warrior is not to cut down the big oak tree the path of the warrior is to kill the acorn. You stop it before it grows. So, 
Here's the thing. Make sure that you are practicing self-defense. Practice your awareness skills. Practice your boundary setting and practice your fighting. Make sure you're practicing all three of those. If you don't have the opportunity to practice the first two in your martial arts class, don't blame your instructor. His job is to keep students in his school. And if he's practicing the first two, most of the time, it does not help to keep students in the school. You could ask him, hey, can we practice some boundary setting tonight? He might go, wow, that's awesome. I didn't know anybody liked to do that. I'd love to do that. Sure, we could do some. Okay, or if not, try it out with some of your friends. Okay, the more you practice it, the better you will get. It's just not always sexy. Okay, it's not going to be that much fun. It's stressful. Make sure uh, you have a clear way to end it when you're done so that everybody knows it's over because it can get kind of ugly if you're doing good role playing. Okay? Make sure you practice in all three phases of your self-defense. They're all important, uh, and you're going to need all three of them in real life. So, I'm Mr. James from Charm City Karate. Practice all three phases of your self-defense, not just the fighting, even though it's the most fun. Have a great day.